So folks, I make it to be five after six. I would, I would suggest, uh, I would suggest we get started and, uh, as people, as people join in, we'll, we'll bring them in and they can, uh, contribute. I, uh, I think most of you know who I am. I'm Peter Hood. I'm the chairman of the select board and I will be the, uh, moderator of this evening's meeting. Um, just a couple of things before we get, uh, we get started. I would introduce uh, the members of the select board who are, who are present. Uh, you've heard from me. We have Phil Hayek. Hi, Phil. We have, we have Steve Martin. We have Mary Skinner. Uh, Liz Scharf is not with us. Her father passed away the other day, so she's dealing with, uh, she's dealing with uh, family stuff. Um, the other thing I just want to let a couple of things, I, I want to let people know, uh, that a week ago, one of the members of our road crew passed away, not on the job. He worked a full day his last day, went home and passed away overnight. Steve McLean, the newest member of our road crew. So I just want everybody to A, be aware of that and B, uh, be thinking of, be thinking of, uh, him and his him and his family. Oh my God! Uh, what machine did he run? He was the newest member of the road crew. I think he pretty much pretty much did a little of everything. I mean, he's only been only been with us for uh, how long, Victor? Six weeks. November twenty ninth, twenty twenty one. Yeah, longer than I thought. Anyway, was he sad? It's still, it's still sad, and we're back in the. You know, we're back in the mode of, of needing to hire another member for the another member for the road crew. So um, that's not a that's not a uh, that's not great news, as I say. No. Um, so so another thing, just quickly, as as we start, if you wish to be recognized, first of all, I would appreciate if people would keep themselves muted uh, for the most part until they want to speak or they're or they're recognized just so it keeps the background noise down. And if you want to be recognized, wave your hand. I've got I've got quite a few little uh, little boxes on my screen, so it's a little challenging. And if uh, Dorinda and Sarah are going to keep their eye out, if I fail to recognize somebody, they'll remind me. And also, if we're all really bad and you haven't been recognized, just speak up and interrupt us, and we'll be sure to uh, recognize you. It's our intent to uh, obviously recognize everyone who would like to uh, like to speak. Um, I think that's pretty much it for for uh, for for housekeeping items. Um, I would just say by way of way of introduction and uh, I hope first of all everyone has received their town report. Is there anybody who does not have a town report? Good news. I was I was really worried, and then last Thursday I received mine. So I presume almost everybody had their town report. Um, so we'll be referring to pages in the town report as we work our way through this process. And if you have a particular uh, item you're concerned about, please reference the uh, please reference the page number. Also, um, when you when you are recognized to speak, uh, Sarah is trying to take notes of the meeting the minutes and she needs to know who's speaking so if you'd identify yourself uh, she may or may not be looking up to see who's talking on the talking on the screen and if you forget to uh say who you are i will i will do my best to to remind you so uh with that wave keep yourself recording in progress and uh hopefully we can have a good organized meeting and everyone can get their questions and concerns addressed. Um, by way of introduction uh, to the meeting and the information, and you're gonna hear this from, uh, from Phil again and, and other board members, but we had one of the most challenging uh, budget processes that I can remember. Um, we had a challenging situation with regard to wages, trying to hire uh, a new accounting bookkeeper person in the office and a new member of the road crew. We were unable to do that uh, at our current level of wages. And we've all been reading in the paper about pandemic wage increases. So we ended up 
having to pay the new people more and at the same time turn around and bring the wages of the existing people up so we were being fair to everyone and we did that we did that midterm so we've got a budget challenge this year to find that uh to find that unbudgeted ex unbudgeted expense but as a result of that and other cost increases we have a significant budget increase uh this year 8.73 percent we started out with uh well over 10 percent and we worked very hard to get the budget increase down to 8.73 percent um we're hoping we're hoping that an increase in the grand list will help out with some of that and that won't result in a 8.73 increase in uh increase in town taxes but that will remain to be seen um so so with that uh uh, Phil is going to give an overview uh, of the budget situation and refer you to uh, to his budget report and the also the uh, the budget compare the detailed budget comparison which is in the town report. So, with that, Phil, you're on. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'm 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 not going to read this to you. Uh, some of you may have had a chance. I had it posted on Front Porch Forum yesterday in anticipation of this meeting. Uh, it also is in the town report, and we've been trying to do this every year now for the past few years to uh, kind of hit the highlights uh, of the items that are the major drivers uh, in our budget increases or in, in decreases in some cases in, in lines. But as Peter um, stated starting out, the, the challenge um, that we had with personnel really um, was unprecedented. And uh, it was an extremely competitive market trying to hire people. In several cases, we went through searches, we interviewed, we made offers. Um, the competition for positions with, with other towns or with private industry uh, was out there. People, in some cases, that we thought were going to come to work for us went to work for others. Uh, we were finally able, you know, to fill positions, um, and uh, that kind of trickled through the whole budget, if you will, um, in a sense that we we raised uh, wage rates uh, above what we were currently offering to, um, in some cases, fairly long term employees. And felt that we couldn't, you know, we couldn't ask those people who had been loyal to us for some years, uh, who had a history working for the town, uh, to work for less money than somebody who was newly hired. So that trickled through, and of course that had an impact on, um, you know, unemployment compensation, workers' comp, uh, benefit packages, um, and all of those things that go along with the cost of personnel. So that was that was a major driver throughout this budget. Uh, the other thing that that shows up as you work through pretty much everywhere, which I think all of you understand just from terms of your own, uh, you know, personal budgets, um, is that uh, the cost of goods and services generally, uh, because of the pandemic, is up and keeps going up. So the the rate of inflation is much higher. And that affects the town the same way it affects any of us as far as our own um, household budgets. So to, to purchase anything or for the cost of services, gas, oil, all of those kinds of commodities that we need to run a town, um, you know, paper, um, business supplies, uh, postage didn't go up, but um, Pretty much everything else was up, and and uh, it's it's reflected in this budget. Um, I'm just going to take a look here and, and skip down through. As I said, general government um, administration um, has increased, um, and again, this one is mainly due to the fact that we have two. Uh, unfilled listers positions. We have had, this is kind of a personnel issue, but these are elected positions and or appointed positions that we just have not been able to keep filled. Um, and as we continue to work through this, we've, we've needed to, uh, as a stopgap measure, do a subcontract 
for an assessor to help us build a grand list and 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 keep uh, keep our grand list up to date uh, with valuation on properties. Um, there are right in um, those positions. The listers are right ins for the most part. This I think in fact maybe all. Uh, this year, hopefully, we will get people into those positions who have some interest, uh, willing to go through training, and are willing to stay with us for a while to help serve the town. If not, we're going to face another situation where we're we're going to have to continue to look at subcontracting, or eventually going out and doing away with an elected listers position and hire someone who's available. And again, that's going to have impact. Uh, on our, our town budget. Um, town hall costs decreased uh, primarily, uh, again, because one of, the, one of the things we've been looking at the last couple of years is what are we gonna do with, with town hall? Um, it is uh, in, in need of repair in a number of different areas. And we have you know, had a lot of discussion about how we approach that. And we've held off doing you know, a number of those repairs simply because we prefer to not put a lot of money into a facility that we may not be able to continue to use uh, for the benefit of the town as we move forward. We're looking at some options as part of our um, capital spending plan, uh, again, which Liz has been heading up, but isn't here. Although Randy, I believe is on that committee and might be able to speak a little more to that. Uh, if anyone has some questions, sorry to put you on the spot, Randy. Um, what else? Uh, public safety, small increase. Uh, fire department. Um, we've, been, we've been working with the department very closely over the past few months. And one of, one of the things that we have wanted to do, and some of you may be aware and others not, that our uh, fire department is not a department of uh, public government. It's a, uh, it basically is a private fire department that operates as a nonprofit organization. And it's been the select board's um, opinion for quite a while that we really would like to bring the department into uh, town government. And we've been, been working closely with the department to get that to happen. Um, we do have a transition plan. I think that's gonna happen. But one of the things that became apparent as we were having, I think we, we continue to have monthly meetings, uh, joint meetings with the department, is that the stipends for our firefighters were really, really minimal. And these are people who um, you know, have really important high risk jobs. They had not been able to attract um, the kind of uh, volunteers that we really need to, to staff our department at an appropriate level. So we felt that we needed to uh, deal, with, deal with that issue to raise stipends, to get it to be a, a, a reasonable level, something uh, certainly in line with what other uh, departments uh, offer um, around the area. So that's certainly had some impact. Um, the rest of the things in the, the fire department budget are things that we understand. Um, debt service on trucks, uh, debt service on the, on the building, and again, utilities, training. I think we may have increased uh, training um, monies available. And, uh, and uh, the uh, department staff, have really availed themselves. I mean, we've been we've been really excited to see the kinds of training uh, and uh, cooperative training they've been doing with other departments around the area. So um, we're we're really glad to have put that money uh, in the budget and made it, make it available for our uh, for our fire department staff. Um, public works. Um, this. I, is the largest portion um, of our budget. And there's a significant increase. Um, the a number of things, again, as I started out talking about just overall operating costs, um, 
have gone up. So the costs of, of uh, gasoline, uh, diesel to run equipment, uh, heating oil for the garage, um, uh, electricity, again, wages, uh, benefits um, show up trickling through here again. Um, we have some issues with the building uh, that we have. Uh, um, I'm sorry. The, yeah, the building up by Romney, which is the um, town garage, uh, definitely has some issues and we, we're having to look at that, but also, you know, we're needing to do some repairs for that uh, to keep it operational. Um, I'm not sure. Is there, Victor, am, anything that I, else I need to mention here that's... A yes, major there problem? is. <clears throat> yeah, I would... Uh... As you can see in the book here, uh, the uh, equipment cost repairs uh, has just gone out of sight, which uh, that that and salaries kind of drove us over the top. Uh, yep. Um, we, uh, of course, uh, it didn't cost us anything, but we had to, uh, well, we got a new grader that cost us some money. Um, but we also had to order, we have scheduled a new uh, plow dump truck and uh, for fiscal 23, 24, but we had to order it by, uh, don't quote me, I think it was November if we wanted to get one, if we wanted to get into the line of, of uh, mm -hmm. having one built for us. So um, okay. yeah. That yeah. thing is uh, equipment and equipment uh, uh, repairs. Right. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Victor. Uh, yeah, that continues to be a challenge uh, for us uh, pretty much all the time, dealing with uh, keeping, the, keeping the equipment going and then repairs uh, needed that kind of just jump up that we didn't expect, of course. Um, and on this kind of... Um, Heavy equipment repairs are uh, are costly. Um, anyone questions before I? Jan. Yeah, Jan. You're muted, I think, Jan. Muted. Is there any COVID emergency governmental relief that we can tap into? Well. So far, um, not that we know of, They're, the final ruling on the use of those funds has just come out. Um, I haven't had a chance to work my way through it. I, I don't know, Dorinda, if you have, um, we've been tossing this around, um, you know, every now and then as we get a little bit more information trickling out. Uh, there hasn't been much that we've seen so far that we would be eligible for, but we're hoping uh, that we we might be able to get some. But my so personal what, opinion is that's going to be that's going to have minimal impact, most likely. So what Phil is talking about is the ARPA funds, which the town has received. And at this point in time, we haven't spent any of that money. And that's roughly uh dorinda help me out but it's like five hundred and eighty three thousand dollars something like that it's a little over 500 but we've only received 50 percent so far right. yeah we've received you've received half of it but yes. um it looks like i i read over the <coughs> the latest stuff and i saw a few a few windows of opportunity uh but exactly how that will sugar off we don't know but we've got our eye on that believe me um, I just noticed that I think it was Denise posted in the chat that the uh, increases in the stipends for the fire department uh, might be eligible, um, you know, for some uh, mitigation under the, uh, the ARPA funds. And you're right, um, that, that may in fact be a possibility. So uh, again, we're going to look at everything we can as those things come along, but um, we, we really don't have anything totally certain uh, I mean, right there, now there were quite a few loans that many you know organizations took part in that were relieved um so 
it would be nice if we could have taken it back. Okay, um, at least for, for governmental agencies, towns, um, I mean, we, we do borrow um, for uh, cash flow and um, for various um, purchases. However, those are typically, you know, ongoing kinds of things. I, I can't think of anything that we needed to borrow that happened strictly because of um, COVID. So I think we would have a hard time and you can't supplant. If it's typical uh, borrowing for operations, those are not things that fall under COVID relief. So, um, and yeah, and again, we've, <laughs> we, we've been around through this. Okay. Well, I, you think, I we, think just to, just to wrap up that, that topic, I, I think what we're, what we're focusing on is if in fact a component of those uh, wage increases that we've talked about an additional expense it is in fact because of COVID. And I think many people are trying to make that case. There's an opportunity, not just on the fire department side, but also on the town side. But anyway, we're, believe me, we're, we're looking at it and working on it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can, we can use some of that, some of those funds to mitigate some of this. Right. Uh, Sarah, you had your hand up. I just want you to know that uh, Denise uh, has a question on the chat that uh, you may not be able to see, Peter, that says, if we vote in this proposed budget, what is the process going forward for application of the ARPA and corresponding scale back of spending under this budget? Just want to make sure you saw that. I'm sorry. Can you say that again a little slower? I'm sorry. If we vote on this proposed budget, what is the process going forward for application of the ARPA and corresponding scale back of spending under this budget? Maybe Denise is present. Maybe you can ask her to, to explain more, a little no, bit. No, that's, that's fine. Let me let me try and and Denise, uh, if you need yeah, if you need more, me to elaborate, let me know. Yeah. No, let us let us know. So, if in fact, if in fact, in this budget year, starting with July of next year, we can use some of those ARPA funds, we can reimburse ourselves from some of the, for some of the expenses we incurred this year and maybe possibly some of the expenses last year. So the net effect would that of that potentially would be that we would underspend our budget. Um, we may very well know more about this by the time we come around to setting the tax rate. So when we're thinking about setting the tax rate, we'll be making a decision about whether we, you know, fund the budget 100% or we think we can use some money out of the ARPA funds, so we don't need to uh, we don't need to set a tax rate to support the whole budget. But that's an unknown. Yeah. At this I point. mean, not to be uh, cynical but, or anything here, but but once you give somebody the money, it's almost never not spent, right? So that that's my challenge. <laughs> well, the issue the issue is the 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 pay raises and the stipends we've got them, and you know the bottom line is we'll see what happens out there in the world with, uh, with wages, but I don't, I don't see wages going back, back down. Are they gonna continue to increase the way they have over the last year or the last six months? Hopefully not, but you know, we, we exist in a very competitive world when we're, when we're competing for employees or volunteer firemen or whoever we're competing for. So we have to at least, our goal has always been to be in the middle of the pack on wages, not be the highest, but certainly not be the lowest. And over the years, that philosophy has worked pretty well for us. We've been able to hire and retain good people, but this year it was just an unbelievable challenge. But yeah, if the if the ARPA funds provide some relief, it's just gonna be a one, one shot relief. It's not gonna be ongoing relief, that's for sure. Does that answer your question? Kind of. <laughs> Do you want to ask a follow-up question? Well, I mean, it feels uncomfortable to me to have a half a million dollars, which I realize, you know, there we don't have that many things that can that can be applied towards, right? Under the rules of the, as I've read them so far. Um, but it feels uncomfortable to have a half a million dollars sitting out there and asking people to have an eight percent increase when we haven't really thought about how to apply that money. Well, we've thought about how to apply that money a lot. I don't <laughs> we've been paying attention to all the meetings, all the guidance. 
uh, everything we could uh, we could read. So don't don't think we haven't been. Uh, okay, but it's not reflected in the budget. That's, that's my concern. It hasn't been reflected in the budget, right? So we're assuming we don't even have that money when we're when we're um, asking people to have for an eight percent increase, and I just don't feel comfortable with that. So again, understand if we have an indication that we really can use that money by the time we set the tax rate, we can reflect that in setting the tax rate. So even though, even though that money is in the budget, we can use potentially use some of that ARPA money to fund the budget and we don't have to use tax dollars. That's the best I can do, I'm sorry. Uh, any other questions uh, about the budget? So, yes, Sarah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Thank Sarah. You. Thank you, Peter. Sarah Seedman. I have a question about the roadside mowing. I understand that you've cut it back uh, as a cost saving measure. As a farmer, I would like to say that the timing of that mowing, if you're only going to do it once, is pretty important. So, I don't know who to plead with or talk to about when the guy is going to do the mowing. But if he waits till August to do it, I, you might as well not do it, okay? Because all the weeds will have spread into the fields by then. So I don't know how you time that mowing. Well, uh, we're... Go ahead, Victor. Yeah, we try to time that, uh, you know, in the spring and later in the summer. Uh, Unfortunately, last year, we were planning on uh, doing it twice, and we rented uh, equipment off from uh, Fairfield, and uh, that equipment just did not work. It was broken down all the time. I mean, uh, if you drove around town, you saw it set inside the road quite often. Uh, to answer your question about once, uh, we have... We have uh, one mowing that's left over that we'll do before July 1st. Hopefully, uh, you know, earlier or early in, uh, in June. And then the one that's left in the budget is the one that we would do after July 1st, 2022. Right. One before first cut and one before second cut would be nice. So that, right. What's first cut? Wait, when? What wait, time? This isn't going to help. Give me a date. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll just tell you which weekend I want it and you'll just get the guys out there. You have some machinery that works now? What's that? Are, it, does, do you have now have equipment that you believe will work? Hopefully. Are we renting it? Beg your pardon? Are we renting it? Yes, yes. We do not go buy a hundred thousand dollar machine just to mow our lawn. Yeah, I mean the, the boys would like to do that, but we just don't have the funds in our uh, in our equipment budget. Um, it's uh, and it's not just getting the equipment. Um, um, as you know or may not know, we have a, a pretty sizable project of. Uh, Paving from uh, well, for about from roughly Steve Martin's house to the interstate, and uh, we have a, a lot of work to do that ditching and uh, uh, installing culverts. So uh, right now we only have uh, uh, the foreman and two guys, and one of those guys has got to be on the grader if you want your roads graded. And so they're not doing the mowing anyway, Vic, right? They're not doing the mowing. I'm talking about the mowing. You were no, talk, talking mowing. about the they mowing, did the mowing too, last sir. Year, sir. Sir. Yes, oh, they, they did are. the they mowing. The machine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because the guy, the guy that we were using retired. I know. I like that People guy. We're getting older, Sarah. They're not. No, I don't think so. On and on and on. <laughs> yeah, that's no excuse, Vic. That is no excuse. I bet. <laughs> Yeah. So, Sarah, the, the bottom line is we're we're very cognizant of your concerns, but there is going to be two two mowings this year. Then we have to look right. in the future where we continue with the two mowings. We did. It's sort of happenstance, but to the extent that the machine didn't work, we can only right. do one yeah. one mowing so far this year. So, in effect, we get two mowings mm -hmm. this upcoming year. 
Okay, thank you very much. I can I can talk to Vic directly about dates. Yep, that'd be great. That'd be great. Other uh, other budget questions, anyone? Let me uh, just finish up the uh, last three yeah, items go quickly. Go ahead, Phil. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, recreation is actually a fairly small budget, but the budget increase of over 50% here is for uh, money to um, repair the tennis court. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how long ago that was put in. Uh, Peter, you, you probably remember. Um, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you remember, does, Dorinda? I think the late 70s, okay. early 80s, yeah. something like yeah. that. And uh, has it ever been uh, resurfaced? It, it had been resurfaced many years ago, but it yeah. was just done, you know, like, uh, I don't know what they call it, like a patch sort okay. of thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, recoded, but the, the drainage and the other problems weren't right. addressed. Right. Very, very expensive, yeah. too. Okay, so we, we are at a point where um, we do need to do some major work on that tennis court. It does get a, get a fair amount of use. Um, and I think if, you know, our feeling is that if we let it go much longer, uh, it's going to almost need to be redone. So um, we have set money aside in this budget to deal with that. Um, the last couple of writings have to do with zoning and planning, and one is up and the other down. Uh, the increase in the zoning uh, and the ZBA uh, kind of combined budget has to do with the anticipated legal fees. Uh, the zoning and the zoning board of adjustment, especially for the, the ZBA, um, we're finding that uh, we have more and more complex uh, issues coming before the ZBA, and that in some cases uh, they have already um, ended up in um, legal proceedings, uh, appeals of decisions, and we expect that as we continue to move forward, there's a fairly good likelihood that we are going to need to spend more money on legal fees uh, to iron out issues um, uh, between uh, people who are asking uh, for waivers to the ZBA. Um, and I, I don't know, there's not much more to say about that. I did serve on the ZBA uh, at a time when that was starting to happen. We were seeing more and more complex issues. So it is, um, it is ending up in legal territory more often than we'd like to see. And that means we need to spend money on legal fees uh, that we haven't had to in the past. Uh, on the other hand, on the planning commission side, and the planning commission has really been, been very active uh, in the past year, uh, their budget has decreased again by 50%. And this is basically uh, due to the, um, the cost of consultants, which have uh, dropped out of the budget and the elimination of a grant match for work that they did, uh, I guess, about a year ago. So that, that phase of that work uh, has been completed. They're moving on to some other um, things that they won't need the consultant or the grant match for. So that, in a nutshell, is the budget that we've prepared. And it was, um, it, it, it took a lot of discussion uh, a lot of uh, fretting over and compromise um, with, you know, what we were going to offer. And it's one of those things that um, we wanted to try and keep costs as reasonable as we could. But yet we also understand that we have a responsibility to provide a certain level of service uh, to the taxpayers and, you know, to the, to the residents here. So this is the best um, that we could do, yeah, and um, hopefully it'll it'll be supported. Thank you, Phil. So I would I would also uh, I would also like to say that uh, the budget process is is done in conjunction with interested members of the public, but 
uh, also in conjunction with the budget committee, who is a very active part of this uh, budget process. And you should uh, take a look at, at their report in the, in the town report as well. They were uh, very vocal about uh, keeping costs under control. And uh, uh, we were too, but we were, we were listening to them and I appreciate their input and cooperation through the, uh, through the process. The process was a challenging year. Uh, any other questions about the budget, Jan? Um, the, it's, the tennis courts. Um, may I suggest that at least one of the courts be turned into a pickleboard, pickle, what's it called? Pickleboard court? Do you know what I'm talking about? Pickleball. Uh, pickleball. Pickleball court. Um, it's becoming much more popular. I think a lot of the community would be able to use it, especially off hours of school, um, instead of just turning them all into tennis courts again. Well, I think that just, just to be clear, and I think that's a good idea, I agree. And my understanding is, and I've seen this in action in other places where it can be a tennis court and a pickleball court, you just have to have you just have to have different lines and I guess you set the net at a different height or, or something. So we will certainly uh, put that in. It would be a great idea to send the, uh, send the board a letter suggesting that. So we don't, we don't forget, Jan, I think that's a really good idea and a minimal, minimal cost to, uh, to do that. Um, anything else, anyone? Okay, um, Victor, do you have anything to add about the about the roads? I think you've uh, pretty much said your piece, but this is your chance to uh, add any other information you think is uh, germane. You're muted. You're muted, Vic. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, uh, Shane and the boys have a uh, challenging summer. I mean, we have to. Uh, the big, the big thing is the repaving project that we have down there, and uh, we have uh, pipes and uh, and ditching to do down there before we can do uh, the actual work. Uh, um, the thought process in order to save money so that we can do uh, the portion of uh, McCullough Hill, uh, which is down to the bridge, which is now paved but broken up, uh, we would uh, have to get into removing some of the uh, existing pavement down there to make up uh, for money in kind to pave that and uh, make it less. We have, <clears throat> the other thing we have is uh, we have uh, our regular maintenance. And uh, as you can see on our five-year plan, we have a pretty, pretty uh, aggressive uh, plan to do uh, the road shown there on the, on the five-year plan for this upcoming year too. And uh, we have a aging uh, excavator. Uh, hopefully we can get that to uh, make it through the, the, uh, the, the repaving project. And, and of course, when we do a full service on a road, we replace, uh, replace all the culverts and uh, and, and replace uh, the do the ditches and stone fill them to meet our environmental uh, obligations. So, um, just to give you a uh, you know an update of what what we're what we're going to have to go through. Hopefully, we will have uh, good luck and uh, no problems, and uh, everything will hold together, and um, we'll find another. Uh, uh, a person to join the crew to uh, to help us fulfill that uh, work requirement. Thank you, Victor. Any questions for uh, Vic? Any questions on any topic with regard to uh, regard to town meeting? I have a question. Um, so it's Denise. Okay, you, know, you can see me. I have a question about the motion, or I should say movement about walkable middle sex and how that fits into the town planning process. Sandy, are you 
uh, available to answer that? Sorry, yes, um, I am. That's a, a project that the Planning Commission has been working on to develop the planning for making the village area um, more you know, safer for walking and for bicycling through the village. It's, uh, there's more activity in the village now. We're trying to figure out how best to manage that. Um, the plan, it's, it's part of the work that the Planning Commission is doing. We're viewing it as, as a longer term project and hoping that, you know, in the next time the road would get upgraded or new work would be done on Route 2, that the, whatever the town decides to do could be incorporated into that. I like to walk over to Red Hen. I hope I'm not dead by the time we get a sidewalk. <laughs> I, I, I totally hear you. I do know the folks at Red Hen are, are also looking at the possibility of sort of some demonstration projects, some temporary fixes to, you know, make that, um, you know, easier to, to walk, to walk there. You know, these transportation projects take a long time. Um, yeah, I wish we could do it overnight, but we're, we're plugging along with it. And thanks. And I will just, since um, we have a survey out, I, we'd love to hear from folks. We have a meeting tomorrow night if you want to provide some feedback on some of the options that we're looking at to um, have sidewalks, trails, slowing traffic down through the village. It would be super helpful to hear from folks. And thanks so much. Anyone else? Yeah, there. Uh, Sandy, it's just, it's always being, uh, the question is always coming up in, in uh, uh, about the, uh, you know, having sidewalks, uh, even there was some talk about bubble outs and stuff like that uh, for, uh, for the crossings. And uh, is this going to be maintained year round? In other words, uh, is there any, uh, any monies or any considerations uh, for say winter maintenance on these uh, or just maintenance on these uh, uh, additions that uh, will be put on uh, uh, for, the, for the road crew to, to take care of or is it gonna be taken care of by those people that have businesses in that area? You know, that remains to be decided. Certainly some areas for sidewalks that's maintained by the folks who, you know, they plow or shovel their sidewalks in front of their businesses. Um, I know one of the options we were looking at had some, you know, bollards, some posts for bike lanes. Those would be taken down in the winter. So the snow plows could go through. But when folks are bicycling in the, when there's not snow on the ground, there would be a, a separated bike lane for them to, to bicycle on. Now, uh, has, has the planning commission the, uh, uh, contacted the agency of transportation and the, uh, uh, the local transportation facilities uh, uh, division where they, they, they have money and they, do, they design that for you? They would, they yeah. would have a, it, would, it would be part of an, an agency of transportation route two project, I realize, something like Waterbury, but has any, anybody been approached for that? Um, certainly, I mean, we've been keeping them in the loop. Basically, what we're doing is a piece of the planning that would normally be done through the transportation agency. So we've just taken that that piece of it, and they're in the loop on on all of the work that we're doing. Okay, thank you, Peter. Hugo has his hand up. Yes, Hugo. Thank you, Hugo Leitman. I'd be interested in hearing from town officers, town boards, the planning commission about articles 15, authorized cannabis retailers, article 16, the integrated licenses and 17, the enhanced energy plan. Um, a little bit of education perhaps, is it good or bad for the town in some people's opinions? Uh, if you're allowed to talk about opinions or what are the, what's the impact on the town? I, I'd Sarah, like some. Sarah, you've got on that. Sarah's put her hand up. Yes. So I, you know, I understand this kind of free flown form, but we really should stick to the agenda. You should really should work through the warning. That's what you're supposed to do. And so that people who are waiting to talk or just here to, they're looking at the agenda, anticipating certain articles that we can get to that. This thing right here. Thank you. 
Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to. It's just a, it's the quote unquote parliamentarian in me. Great. I I'll wait my turn. <laughs> so really, uh, what we anticipated, with all deference to our to our town clerk who keeps us on the uh, on the straight and narrow all the time, is uh, we decided to have a presentation about the budget and the roads, and then have more or less. Uh, open it up for questions on other topics rather than go down and discuss every uh, every item on the warning. Um, certainly, we're happy to answer any questions or any concerns about any of those uh, items. And uh, Hugo, unfortunately, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, your questions are at the <laughs> at the end of the line on the uh, on the warning, but we won't forget you. So I would say if if anybody has has questions on uh, on any other item, uh, now's the time, or if board members have anything to say about any of the other items, now is also the time. Jana Claire would like to speak on Article 11. Okay, Janet. Well, what about, are we gonna just mention the other articles to see if anybody wants to talk on those or no? Well, I am unfortunately, I, I mean, we can, we can go down through each and every one, but we could also be here all night. I mean, if people have no questions or concerns, I don't think we need to talk about all the other articles, but I'm happy to do what everybody wants. Yes, Sarah. Just do me a favor and read through the articles. So just in case somebody can say, yes, I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to talk about community connections, or I'd like to talk about, you know, the let's interest do, rate. Of let's do, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So the warning for the town meeting starts on page nine. So uh, I would encourage you all to, uh, to open up your town report to page nine. I am not going to read uh, each and every word in each and every one of these articles, but I will mention each one of them and then we can uh, see if anybody has any questions or concerns. So article one is to elect uh, necessary officers for the ensuing year. I think that's pretty clear unless anybody has any questions. Um, article two is shall the town of Middlesex authorize payment of all property taxes to the town treasurer as provided by law without discount in four installments. Uh, the due dates are in there. It's basically mirroring what we've been doing uh, the, last, the last few years. Any questions or concerns about article two? Article three is the usual article about uh, charging interest uh, on delinquent taxes and the rate has been 0.5%. This 0.5% is no change. Um, article four uh, is the budget article, which we've already discussed in some, uh, in some detail. Uh, article five, is shall the town of Middlesex appropriate the sum of $5,000 to the conservation fund. That again is something we have been doing every year uh, to build up a fund of money. Uh, we've used money from that fund in the past for the town forest and other uh, <laughs> projects. Uh, then we get into uh, the, uh, the special articles. Um, Article six is, and, and what we did this year, uh, just to remind everybody, is we made the decision that if organizations would request the same amount of money they requested last year, uh, they didn't have to do a petition to get put on the ballot. So for the most part, all of these uh, special articles, article, six through 14, well, let's say six through 13 are all the same as last year. The one exception is the uh, Kellogg Hubbard Library who submitted a petition. And I believe we have a representative of the library, Carolyn Brennan is on the Zoom call. So if you have any questions about the library, we've got a live in-person person here to answer those answer those questions. Does anybody have any questions or concerns about any of those special articles? Yes, Victor. 
at the risk of being completely ridicule, I will ask a few questions about this. Uh, it's, uh, um, has anybody uh, uh, looked into, uh, well, first of all, I guess you get 54% of your funding from the towns. We're talking about the library, Victor? Yes, the library. Okay. Yeah, that's that's correct. It's always a little bit over 50%. And Sarah uh, Seedman, who is our rep, our Middlesex rep to our board of trustees has her hand raised. I'm just noting. I, I just want to direct your attention to page 70 because that's the report. So if you want the facts and figures, page 70 on your town report. Thank you for that information, sir. I was what I'm wondering about is uh, um, the governor came out, and as I understand, a lot of the uh, the interest for this uh, for the for the library and all, all the towns giving money for the library, it's uh, it's very uh, it's it's used a lot by after school uh, children. Is that correct? Yeah, um, more so prior to the pandemic. Uh, so before the pandemic started, we would have upwards of 75 kids in the children's library at any given time between three and about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Yeah. Um, now we're doing, um, we're going out and we're visiting a lot of the schools, the ones that we can actually like get into or we're doing virtual visits to try mm -hmm. to um, teach kids about how to use the library. Um, and we're doing some more sort of targeted outreach to different special, to, to different groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, we've got the, the Afghan families that, again, that have moved into Montpelier um, coming out to do an orientation at the library this week. But um, our after school traffic is definitely down. Did you want to know more specifics about after school or? Not really. What, um, it's it. Uh, what I'm interested in is, you know, uh, there were several million dollars that Governor uh, Scott uh, wants to allocate for both after school uh, programs and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, and also for during the summer uh, for, yeah, for summer programming. Yeah. Which I also understand that you contribute to that in the summertime. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so I was just, I, I did write a letter to uh, Governor Scott asking him that, uh, what is there, seven or eight towns in this uh, school district that, uh, that, that, that are being asked to, uh, to donate money to the Kellogg Hubbard Library. Um, and uh, supposedly you're going to get a response for it, but, but I don't know as I would. Uh, I don't know if that'll actually happen. Um, you know, just stating that this is an ongoing every year. Uh, it does affect our tax rates uh, in, in, uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, and it also, you know, uh, with tight times, uh, you know, maybe the, you know, there's several things like Sarah's roadside mowing and stuff that uh, would be easily taken care of with this amount of money. But with, with that said, have you, is there anybody from Kellogg Hubbard Library that has uh, petitioned the governor for some of that money? Or is there some other, you know, uh, of that stimulus money? I mean, it seems to be gobs of it around that could, you know, not totally take away the amount of money that we would, you know, that each town would, would, would give you, uh, but maybe help out. And so... It, nine percent increase maybe drop that down a little bit uh, i don't know gotcha so um so we did we have applied for we applied um at the beginning of the pandemic for some um, money that offset an earnings loss from our book sale when we had to close the building for a little while there in 2020 uh exactly. and so that was pretty much that that pretty much just just covered a loss um, and then we are getting some ARPA funds. So I heard you all talking about ARPA funds earlier and the Department of Libraries through the um, national level organization, the IMLS, we are, we're seeing some funds trickle down to us from that. Um, but like a lot of grant funds, there are really specific ways that we can use that money. So we're getting uh, $25,000 from the Department of Libraries 
but it's to be used for uh, PPE, um, technology and, and pandemic related losses. So all of the costs that we have increase every year with inflation, like every, every organization has increases every year, um, we still have to cover that in our regular operating budget. So that's where these increases are coming in. And we, we did hold off for, for four years. We haven't requested an increase from, uh, from our outlying town since town meeting day 2018. Uh, and, you know, costs have gone up every single year that we've level funded, which is why we're seeing this jump this year. So, so we are getting some ARPA funds, um, but those ARPA funds are, we're using that to play catch up with some of our technology equipment. Our networking equipment now is um, going on to its 10th year. We installed it in 2012 and that's got to get changed out. And that's a, um, about a $7,000 project. And then we've got PPE increases to be able to keep the building open. We've got to buy, you know, sanitizer and gloves and masks to hand out to people and all that good stuff like everybody else does. Um, and then we have um, staff, uh, staff computers that are about a decade old also. So we're, we're mostly using the ARPA funds. We're using it for some outdoor space making, which is going to increase our ability to have programs and activities, particularly for kids and as part of the summer reading program outside on our lawn and then the rest of it's pretty much going to get eaten up by technology just just playing catch up for stuff that we haven't replaced and haven't been able to replace in a really long time so if you could get some of that money that uh that the governor i mean talking, maybe <clears throat> yeah, really they, help you, yeah 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 if it's yeah. if it's out there if there if there's more money to be had out there but i'm not going to know that we would have it before you know before next tuesday <laughs> okay all right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions on uh, Article 6 through 13? Anyone? Okay. Uh, article 14 is the uh, omnibus article we've had in recent years where um, if organizations choose to uh, apply for money for the town of Middlesex for $250 or less, all they do is uh, submit a letter. They don't have to do a petition. And uh, we create the list and make it one special article. So there's the list. Unfortunately, in the, uh, in the no live town meeting world, there's no opportunity to amend or adjust that article. We either have to vote in favor of it or vote against it. But I'd be glad to, uh, reports for most of the organizations are in the town report. If you wanna read them, I didn't check to see that they were all there, but I presume they're, uh, they're mostly there. So that's, that's that. Um, Hugo, here we go. <laughs> we've, got, we've gotten to you. So we had a, a citizen in town who requested that Article 15 and 16 be put on the town meeting ballot. After a fair amount of, of discussion, the select board decided that the best approach to this was to put both articles on the, uh, on the ballot and let the citizens in the town, the town decide. Um, unfortunately, I would say none of us are are experts on this on this subject. I think the feeling of the select board was, um, let's see how the citizens feel about having this having this happen in in Middlesex. And there are basically two articles. The first article permits cannabis retailers in the town, and the second one, Article 16, permits integrated licenses, which is kind of a confusing term. But uh, what an integrated license means is that you can grow wholesale and retail cannabis. So that's the more uh, that's the more inclusive uh, inclusive of the two. Do any of the any of the board members or anyone else have anything to uh, to to add to this? Again, it was it was done at the request of a citizen to put this up to a up to a town vote. Peter. Yes, Victor. I understand uh, from the news that, that there's no uh, 
there's no it's uh, there's not uh, any uh, much of an income uh, enhancing uh, portion of that to the town because you can't charge any more tax than the 20 percent unless you have the already one percent which we don't have for meal rooms and meals so that's correct that's so correct. it's more of a it's more of a, it would, uh, it's it would be more of a convenience uh, you wouldn't have to go as far to uh, to get your uh, product <laughs> well you know we we again I mean, we I don't, 41 I, don't towns. I don't know the answer to all the questions but what we did discuss at the select board and other board members helped me out um, was let's say just for example that uh, the red hen wanted to sell uh, cannabis products. Would that potentially enhance their business and make that a better situation for for them and also for the town? Possibly, who knows? Would somebody maybe uh, open up a pot shop downtown if it was allowed? Possibly, possibly yes, but you're red right. Red hen could do, uh, could do pot brownies. <laughs> Yeah, who knows? I mean, it, right. oh, there are a lot. There are more. There are more unknowns in this than there are than there are knowns. And it is a if it if we do if we do approve either one or both of these articles, it's it's tightly regulated by the state of Vermont. So we are right. not we are not involved. I'll be right with you, Phil. So it, it's not like it's not like uh, the select board is going to be out there patrolling who's buying cannabis and who isn't. That is, that is not the case at all. Right. right. Yes. And, and, and the state has uh, the regulatory and the enforcement uh, portion of that. They're working on it right now anyways. Correct. And I understand that if they go through, uh, you wouldn't be able to do it until October anyways. That's when, I believe that's when you can open up Hot chops Correct. for the first Correct. time. Yes, that's my understanding. Yes, Phil. Um, I I just wanted to go back and 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 I think my recollection is correct that as a select board we had an option to have this article as either two parts or as one, so that both the retail and the integrated license were combined and and would have been one article. So it would have either all passed or all been defeated. We chose the option to put them as separate articles so that either one could pass or either one could be defeated. I, I think I'm correct on that, but I don't, um, you know, maybe Sarah um, remembers or can refresh my memory. I just wanted to make the point. You're right. Am I right? Okay. I believe right. that's correct. Yes. Okay. That was all part, that was all part of our, uh, that was all part of our discussion. I mean, right. again, the thought being, uh, we still have uh, not a lot, but we have some uh, some farmland in Middlesex, and we certainly have some underutilized agricultural land. If someone in Middlesex wanted to grow cannabis and it was legal and it was a source of revenue for them, um, and it kept agricultural land and in, in uh, being used for agricultural purposes, that might be a good thing. But again, it's a it's a town uh, it's a town decision. Yes, Sarah. I just, well, I just want to reiterate what uh, was mentioned during that select board meeting, which is that these are these are entities that are legally allowed already to do what they do. So all the all the town voters are being asked is, are you going to allow these entities, which are already approved by the state of Vermont's cannabis board or whatever, to do what they do to operate in Middlesex? The, if the voters pass this, they're not they're not creating, they're just allowing state authorized entities to, to sell, either sell or do the integrated licenses to the soup to nuts, right? Am I wrong about that? I no. believe you are correct. Right. Thank you. Either we still have, we have two um, things in chat. The first one is Janice, it would like to say a few words about Article 11, and Denise was asking, I believe she was referring to Article 14, whether or not those organizations were 501c organizations. Okay, so Article 11 is $7,000 to the Montpelier Senior Activity Center. So Jan, that was you? Yes. 
Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm I'm not a Middlesex resident or voter, but I um, I live and work in Montpelier. And I'm Jana Clare. I work for the city of Montpelier doing communications and development for our community services department, which is comprised of the Senior Activity Center, Parks and Recreation. And I'd served as director of the Senior Center for the past decade, but in September, um, we transitioned to a new director named Sarah Lipton who uh, looks forward to meeting more Middlesex residents in the coming year, and she sends her regards. Um, so our mission is to enhance the quality of life for the older adults in the Montpelier area through opportunities that develop physical, mental, cultural, social, and economic well-being in a welcoming and flexible environment. And um, I know there's quite a few of the Senior Center members and active participants on the, on the Zoom tonight, so it's nice to see you all. Um, so despite COVID, we've continued as a vital resource for residents of Middlesex, providing feast curbside pickup meals twice a week, um, referrals to area services, three dozen affordable weekly classes, which now are online, in-person, or hybrid. Um, more are online than in-person at this point, um, and many free drop-in groups. We also offer financial aid, technology assistance, tax preparation, foot care clinics, media, and more. And in recent years, most of our classes have opened up to younger adults and teens in some cases, making them accessible to even more of your residents, um, especially due to so many of them being offered online. And we're excited about expanding those multi-generational opportunities. So our labor facility and other operational costs to provide our vital services are increasing. And the city of Montpelier is including a larger allocation in its budget for our senior center in FY23 but we are seeking level funding from the town of Middlesex. Um, in FY21, we served at least 68 Middlesex residents. And since many of our activities don't track the town of residency, the number is probably higher. Um, we really appreciate, as always, Middlesex voters and residents' interest and support. And we hope, into, we hope to welcome and serve more of you in the coming year. So if you haven't ever checked out our services or programs, um, we would love to give you a tour and show you around and find out what you might be interested in. Um, and we also recognize other senior centers and agencies importance to your residents. Um, and we believe in working collaboratively. Um, so thank you for considering our level funded request of $7,000 to support our affordable programs and services for older middle sex residents. Our total FY23 budget is 675,300. So our request to your town represents um, uh, just about 1% of our budget. And I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Any questions for Jana? Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. And Denise, you wanted to ask a question about Article 14? Yeah, I just was wondering whether these are like 501c or you know equivalent sorts of organizations that we were contributing to, or if there was any requirement to be so. I don't believe there is a requirement, but I believe most of them are. And again, uh, their reports are in the town report. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I know many of them, many of them are because I'm looking down through the list, but some of them I'm not familiar with. Maybe you know the answer to that, Sarah, do you? Um. Uh, you know, almost every single one is, for example, I don't know about the Montpelier Veterans Council. I don't know what exactly they are, but there's, uh, to my knowledge, there is no requirement that you have to be a 501c3 uh, or organization in order to ask for money. But so far, even Big Heavy World, which is probably the biggest outlier on this list, um, is, I believe they, they have that, that uh, status. Thank you. Yeah, when I look down through the list, I'm familiar or at least passingly familiar with those organizations and I know that most of them are but I can't certify that they all are and okay I was just curious because it could be some fly-by-night thing you know who knows right so I was just curious well I mean if you have any questions honestly this is why when we, we took over the town report we have all the contact information so you're free to you know contact them there should be email telephone I would call them because uh, it's, you know, it's not my job as a, uh, to track down people's tax status on these situations, but I, they're putting themselves out there. And if they want money, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling them and asking them, why do you think you deserve this money? That's my opinion as a town clerk. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. 
Thank you, Sarah. So do we have anything, anything else on Article 15 or 16? Hugo, does that answer your questions? Okay. Okay, so our last, uh, our last article is Article 17. Shall the town voters approve the enhanced energy plan and its appendix and an update to the town plan? And uh, Sandy, once, once again, you're the, you're the likely suspect to talk about this one. Sure, thanks so much. Um, just, I'm Sandy Levine, I'm the chair of the Middlesex Planning Commission. And the Planning Commission worked for a couple of years on the Enhanced Energy Plan. We worked closely with the um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and pulling this together. And it basically takes the state's energy plan and figures out, you know, what can we do as a town? What can, what parts of that can we implement? Can we encourage um, to reduce overall energy use um, to address problems with climate change to encourage more renewable energy within the town and and so on so that's what the enhanced energy plan is it's aspirational it's it's part of um, it would it would become if approved by the by the voters it would become part of the town plan and would guide town actions going forward. Any questions for Sandy about the enhanced energy plan? So I just have a yeah. comment. Um, I read the thing from cover to cover, um, which was uh, hard to stay awake, I have to say, during part of it. But, um, but I think it's a really well done piece of work. I mean, I know it's hard to establish something like this, right, because it's pretty nebulous, right? I mean, in terms of what a small town like Middlesex can do. Um, I come from the energy uh, business the bad part, right? The oil and gas people. Um, and I just thought it was a really well done piece of work. Great, thank you. And thank you for reading through it all. <laughs> who, just, who just spoke? Denise. Uh, sorry, Denise. Denise. Sorry, okay, Denise. Thank sorry. You. <laughs> sorry, Sarah. Yes, Sarah Seidman. I just wanted to echo that. Thank you, Sandy, so much. This is This is the hard work of you know, trying to move the town forward is this sort of nuts and bolts grinding along and getting these plans in. So appreciate your work on it. Thank you. Other questions, anybody? Peter? Yes, Victor. It, um, yeah, Sandy, um, it's just an opportunity to ask this question. I guess I could have asked it months ago. Um, is it true, like, if you have, so I mean, this may not have anything to do with your plan. If you have solar panels, they're not taxed as far as uh, real property? I have no idea. I believe that is true, that you do, they don't tax them, but yet they will tax, if you have renewable uh, uh, wood, they'll tax your woodshed. <laughs> Would anybody, uh, would you, would, would the energy com committee uh, entertain uh, looking into that? I, mean, I think Is those taxes are, those taxes are set up as my understanding at the state level um, and what is exempt and what is included in sales tax and, and so on. But we have a very active energy committee um, and it'd be great to have them take a look at it and make a recommendation. If it's something the town can do, we might be able to do something. If it's something the state needs to do, talk to your legislator, talk to Kimberly Jessup. Yeah, Phil, I see you, Jan. We'll get to you in a second. Phil. Um, my understanding, having just uh, had a st solar installation this past uh, summer and into fall is that in, that in fact the value that the solar installation may add to your house cannot be cannot increase your tax your property tax amount so that that is cost neutral as far as the woodshed victor i you know uh, i'm not sure about that but you know probably have to get taken to the woodshed you know to get the answer to that yeah. that's right no pun intended <laughs> oh jan you're muted, you're muted jan. <laughs> all i know is it, it's been many years but i was the first wind generator in town and 
um, the whole town voted against um, us being, no, against for our wind generator being taxed, saying that in fact, it could easily be, you know, that it it is giving so much worth to our land. And, and we actually said, you know, it's four bolts. We, it could just be taken down. And they said, sorry, no. And in <laughs> fact, like five years later, that's what we did. We sold it and four bolts were taken down and it was gone. But um, it was pretty upsetting at the time that we were taxed for that wind generator. I would agree with you. Anything else, anyone? Okay. So uh, I just had a couple of things. Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry. I just wanted to thank uh, the select board members and the members of the community for the honor of serving on your select board for 24 well, years. Mary, part of my part of my closing remarks was going to be to recognize you for all your years of service. So oh, okay. I let me do that right now. First of all, I would point out to everyone that uh, Mary Skinner has served the town in a couple of different capacities from, for a period of time, she was on the budget committee, but since 1998, she's been an active member of the select board. And I've served with her for most of those years. I'd like to, uh, personally personally thank her and thank her on behalf of the town and Mary I would say we haven't always agreed over the years but I think we've had a good working relationship and I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed working with you over the years and I really appreciate uh, all your work on behalf of the town and uh, most of you have probably already noticed that our town report is dedicated to Mary this year to uh, to honor her years of service so you've kind of beat me to the punch Mary but I, well, I want to add you on the list and uh, thank you for uh, thank you. all your hard work, for all your thank hard work. For the ability to serve. Thank you, Peter. Yep. And the other person I just wanted to mention is Bruce Fitch was a long-term member of our road crew who retired in, uh, in November. And uh, we had a little, uh, select board had a little cake and a, and a party for him. Uh, but I just like to uh, again, we don't have a we don't have a town meeting, so we can't recognize him at the town meeting. And I just like to recognize him at this forum. And he's not uh, participating in the Zoom, but uh, thank him for all his years of service to the town as well. Um, the last thing uh, the last thing I have is there's been some discussion tonight about these uh, about these ARPA funds. And the select board envisions uh, making the process of determining how we use those ARPA funds as public as possible. We haven't, we haven't created a plan as to how we're gonna do that, whether we're gonna have separate hearings, whether we're gonna include it as part of our select board meetings, but we're looking forward to public interest and, uh, and support in that process, because it is, you know, never say a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it is a significant opportunity for the town of Middlesex. That's a lot of money. That's almost that's almost half of one year's budget in uh, in additional money that we have to use. And uh, one of the I'll, I'll I'll get to you. Um, one of the big things we can use it for is uh, is broadband, and that's one of the things we're going to be looking at. But we're we're also, and, and we don't have to all use it for one thing, we can divide it up. So if we can use some of it to uh, help out with the town budget and the town tax rate, I think it would be a good goal to do that. Um, enhanced broadband in town is of course a huge issue. So um, if this allows us to move that, move that forward or move it ahead, that's a big thing. Other people, I know Liz Scharf was was interested to see if there were funds available for our food bank, our local food bank. That may also be possible, but we want it to be a public process. We want to hear what the citizens in, in town, uh, in town, uh, how they'd like to see us use the money. Uh, 
Yes. I know you're not Hugo. Are you Mrs. Uh, Hugo? I'm, I'm Cynthia Liebman. Hi. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just wanted to suggest that you post, thing, post reports on Front Porch Forum regarding this discussion. That would be very helpful for everyone in town to see. Yes, we will certainly do that, and we'll also uh, we'll also post it on the post it on the website, of course. Yes, Sarah. I just want to say that this is also recorded. So if anybody wants to get a recording, it's hard for me to keep it on the website because of its size. But you can I can get a recording to you, or I can give you an access key so you can get a recording, and I'll have the minutes done by tomorrow. And uh, it's on our website all the time. So I usually I'll just put a little thing on front porch forum saying. The, the minutes for this are on the website. Hopefully I didn't screw them up, but you never know. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You never, um, mess, never messes them up. No, oh, sure. <laughs> there you go. So, so the, the uh, and I promise this is, this is, this is the end for me, but um, you've heard that we are, that we need uh, to find uh, and appoint two new listers and we are looking for people seriously <laughs> looking very hard for people who might be interested in that I, I would tell you when it came up earlier in the in the meeting tonight that in the uh, in recent times and down through all the years part of the listers responsibility has been to to go out, out inspect properties both both new construction properties and properties that have been changed and amended. Um, that no longer is the case because we have subcontracted that appraiser process. So the lister function would primarily be uh, working in the in the town office, uh, integrating the reports from the appraisers into the town uh, computer, uh, computer system and submitting that information to the state. So we don't know exactly how many hours that is, but we can put you in touch with the people who've been, who've been doing that work and let you know what the, we budgeted what, 314 hours, Sarah, for listers, I think. Oh, ask Dorinda. For Dorinda. It does pay, uh, it's, it's pay, it's, so it's. Yes, it's a paid it's, position. It's a paid position. We did 800 hours between the three positions, um, but if we only have two, of course, that will, they'll pick up those extra hours, so. But that's a little bit, that's also a little bit of an unknown. It's, it's an estimate because- uh, It was an estimate based on us hiring. This is new to go out and have the assessor. So it was just a best guess. Correct, but um, we're, looking, we're looking for interested people. And also, as we've already mentioned, uh, we're looking for a new member of the road crew uh, as well. So if anybody knows of anyone who might be interested, help us out. It's a challenge to find people to meet these positions. Did I do a good job on that speech, Sarah? Did, but you forgot the collector of delinquent taxes. Oh, the collector <laughs> of delinquent taxes. <laughs> Which There's I'm pretty a... sure that falls to the chair of the select board. So. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, yes. The collector of delinquent taxes. There's a wonderful opportunity to serve the town. We're looking, we're looking for all the, all the help we can get. The delinquent tax position is also a, uh, a paid position. Anyway, thank you all for attending the meeting tonight. We, we really appreciate it. I hope you've had some valuable information. And Mary, this is the end of your select board career. So remember, they're putting, maybe you'd like to be a lister, Mary. There, there are opportunities available for town service. That's who. Maybe I'll decide to come back again later. <laughs> or you could be a delinquent tax collector. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Mary again. Yeah. Sincere, sincere thanks for all your hard work.